Hi everyone, Steve Buzzer here, and today we are talking my initial thoughts of the new TaylorMade driver. So I have been using the Stealth 2, and I'm excited this week that my QI10 has arrived. Um, I've hit it a few times, um, and I was lucky to hit it a few times in December also. So two big changes, one in terms of look, one in terms of performance. So if you have been using TaylorMade product or you've been checking out reviews, you've been in the market for a driver for a few years, um, I would say the Stealth was extremely low spinning. The Stealth 2, more forgiving, but definitely had a higher spin profile compared to that of the Stealth. Um, what I would say with this new QI10 is it seems to have adopted and taken the best parts of both of those drivers and kind of put it into a singular product. Um, the carbon, and they're definitely staying with carbon, you know, the, the carbon faces. Um, the red wasn't because it was carbon, it kind of signified the stealth line. So they've removed the, the red, they've gone into this like blue. I think for more of the traditionalists, they're going to prefer the blue. But um, when you look down, you can't really see the face on either of the products. So um, the face to me isn't really that important. Um, they do the customized ones. You can kind of change it to whatever color you wanted. But uh, like I say, they, because they've gone into carbon, I felt the Stealth 2, they increased the amount of carbon and that increased the amount of spin. Um, uh, an analogy I use, and I'll use this in a club fitting, and um, I can also apply it to the drivers themselves when we're comparing model against model, is like Formula One, a race car, um, you have to consider the downforce. So if you remove the downforce on a Formula One car, um, it can go faster in a straight line, but then it can't get around the corners. So you have to find this nice blend between that raw top speed and the ability in Formula One to get it around the corner on the golf course is to remain on the golf course. So and again, I, I appreciate that analogy is a little simplistic and a little flawed, but when it comes to the spin model, um, you, you need a nice blend between the two. Um, if you've seen any of the advertising for this new driver, they're kind of going, look, we've got all of this forgiveness and we're reducing spin also. Um, I actually believe that's true. Um, one of the, and I'm not gonna say it's an issue with the Stealth 2, um, I had to go down into an eight degree to find my spin model or hit the range of spin in which um, I, I desired. Um, I hit down on the ball slightly, um, especially when I'm on the golf course. So when you're getting fit for a driver, consider the swings you make you know, on the range, especially hitting shot after shot after shot, compared to the swing that you make on the golf course individually hitting, you know, it, we don't want to be in a situation where we're hitting back-to-back -back drivers, that means we're hitting a provisional. You know, there's going to be, you know, 10, 15 minutes between shots, so it can sometimes be hard to get into the flow. And it's also understanding your tendencies. So for me, if you put me with a launch monitor, you know, I got like the full swing here. You, um, you give me a little chance. I will start to hit up on the ball gradually and I'll find a nice feeling to do that. Um, under pressure on the golf course, I tend to revert to type. I revert to what my body wants to do. I tend to hit down on it a little bit. Um, that's going to increase the spin significantly. So I have to kind of consider on the course, that's what I do. The eight degree meant I wasn't, going to go crazy high in the spin when I made that swing in particular. But by lowering the loft, um, it can cause a launch issue. Um, the loft doesn't change it as much as people think. But um, kind of been able to go into the nine degree, which I, I have in, in the new product, I kind of show that as a sign generally that they've improved the spin profile of the driver. And again, a little more testing is needed for that, but certainly when I tried it in December, that was the noticeable thing. Um, stealth, that was very noticeable. In the nine degree, in that model, I, um, I was actually struggling to spin it. Or I, had, I think I ordered an eight degree in the Stealth because the Sim 2 
was spinning a lot. And if you can, if you compare SIM2 versus SIM, they did the same thing. They added a lot more carbon onto the SIM2. So I'm kind of, that's where I'm going. Like, I think when there's more carbon on the body, the more spin. Um, you could argue I don't have enough examples to justify that comment, but nevertheless, um, this new driver, performance, definitely spinning lower, and it's definitely faster. I think it's definitely faster. It's definitely faster. <laughs> I'm trying to put the disclaimer in there. Um, I hit it in December, and it was a cold day, and I didn't really warm up, and I, I made a couple nice swings, and I got the ball speed to 178 for a couple swings. Um, that is not my norm. So I'm considering this year, and again, I'm doing speed training and stuff. It's not just about the club. But I do feel like I could break into the 180 range this year. Won't be the norm, but it would be lovely if I could jump in there when I'm practicing so then I can cruise at like 175 as my normal swing on the golf course. So um, I'm excited about this head for that. Um, is it more forgiving? I haven't hit it enough. Um, I've seen all the um, images and I know they're excited about it. But um, I haven't hit it enough to, to make that comment. Um, I hope it is because my miss tends to be slightly out the toe. So if it's more stabilized there, um, A, I'm going to get more ball speed, but I'm just going to feel more comfortable with it in general. So that's the performance. The look, massive change. Um, they've removed the top line that, they, that they've used for many products. Um, so it's got a far more classical look. Um, I, I'm kind of going back to the R, probably, I think it would be the R9. I think, I think it was R9 when it was um, completely blacked out and the, the crown went all the way to the face. Um, that's exactly what's happening with this club. Um, I think I had an R9 Super Deep, which was uh, a beautiful looking club. Um, probably a little too small for my, uh, for my repertoire right now, but uh, yeah, the, the, it had a really sleek, classical look. Um, and they seem to have gone back into that. That could be there's some, there's some really good classical looking clubs. You know, the, the, the Titleist TR series in general have been very impressive, especially looks wise. And what I feel, and like I said, I've gone from an eight to a nine. The new driver that I have actually looks like it's got less loft compared to its predecessor. And that's because that, that chunkiness of that top line um, almost it moves your eyes back so it kind of gives the impression that there's a bit more loft. Um, they've put, like again, if I can compare it here, they've done what they've done with the um, fairway woods, you know, so they've kind of put on this um, top line um, to kind of, for me, it, it increases the look of loft, but it um, gives you a, a strong contrast between the face and the body of the club. But um, very different, far, far more traditional. And hitting it, the sound is very different. And I'm trying to do my initial review here and I'm, I wanna go, look, it sounds like X, it sounds different. Um, I, I think it's slightly, slightly tingier, slightly higher pitched. Um, I actually didn't notice when I was hitting in here, I didn't notice when I was hitting in, in my bay where I coach. Um, but when I got out into the golf course, I could kind of, um, I could def it, it was, a, Big difference in the sound. Some people, the sound is very important. To me, not so much. Um, I, I will definitely, look is, is kind of important to me, but performance is the number one goal. Um, I'll, I'll get used to the sound regardless of what it is, but I think it's definitely slightly tingier. No, no idea why. Um, I know they've changed how the club face sits onto the body, so that could be the reason or the whole chassis has kind of changed because they don't have that top lip. So slightly different sound, far more traditional, slightly lower spinning and slightly faster. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing, and you'll see a few other reviews, um, why some faster players, some very good players are able to go into the standard products. Obviously I'm giving you the LS here. Um, Rory is in the standard one. Marikawa is in the max. Which, um, which surprises me because he was in a SIM product, the original SIM, which if you've hit that one is exceptionally low spinning, exceptionally low spinning. So um, like I said, this is, I think this has a far better spin profile. So I'm not surprised Colin 
is liking this product, but I am a little surprised he's gone into the max. Um, there might be some hot melt in there, I, I don't know. Um, probably taken off some of the loft to get into his spin window. But uh, yeah, that surprises me a little bit. Don't know the reason why. Get, get, get your comments down below. Um, if you have a theory on why he's gone into that one, I think Rory makes more sense in the standard because he tends to hit that little draw. That's going to pull some spin off, so that kind of sits nicely for him. Um, you take me, I'm kind of hitting the little fade, so um, I think the LS is going to be good for me. Then I can kind of start committing to that fade, and I know I'm not going to overspin it. But again, it's why it's really important to kind of get fit, try, try these things out. Um, but I think Max, compared to the HD of the, of the Sim 2, to Stealth 2, I should say, um, the, the Stealth 2, um, that one definitely had too much spin if you wanted to hit it far. My, my race car example, um, the HD had lots of downforce, lots of spin, definitely keeping you on the racetrack, keeping you on the golf course. But um, you were giving up a significant amount of distance because of the spin. So you're going to have a nice drive, but you're, you're not going to win the race. Um, this Max, is, um, I think they've, again, because the nature of all the product being slightly lower spinning, I think you'll find a lot of golfers will do sensationally with the Max. Um, I will be trying a few of the heads. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll stay in the LS. Um, I have a few shafts to try. Um, I'm, I'm in the blue Ventus TR. Um, and that's a 6X. Um, I was in the LA Golf A Series, and before that I was in the Red Ventus. So I, I have a few shafts I can play around with. Um, the shaft combination with the head definitely changes the sound. So it'll be interesting if the sound changes or it kind of goes back to what I was used to if I find a shaft that is more suitable. But again, um, we'll have to watch this space for that one because I'm not necessarily saying this Ventus Blue isn't doing its job. So. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Get some comments down below. Stay happy, stay safe. I hope to catch you soon.